Welcome everybody to a brand new week of CSI 41. Today we're going to be talking about a really important topic, which is iterators, uh, ranges, and the standard library. And so, uh, how many people here have used pointers before? Especially when it turns into like a, an array and, and things like that. So, for example, we could do something like this, integer pointer r equals new int 10, like that. And then we can say array 7 equals 42. We can see out array 7, like that. Anyone know what this is going to print to the screen? Going once, going twice. A point, you know, array is a pointer. R is a pointer, but it's also an array because I nude an array. So what is this going to print? What do you guys think? So my e to n. This is the bold green key, by the way. It's uh, my favorite. Should be 42. Yeah, so what this line of code here is doing, it's grabbing uh, 40 bytes. Uh, every integer is 4 bytes. There's 10 of them. 10 times 4 is 40. It's grabbing 40 bytes off what's called the heap. So the operating system uh, keeps track of like which parts of RAM are used, which parts of RAM are not used. It locates 40 bytes and it hands us a memory address. A pointer is just a memory address. And saying here is the beginning of your 10 um, integers. And uh, we are setting integer number seven in that sequence to 42, uh, wrong one, and we get 42. Now, what would happen if we tried accessing 70? Is 70 between zero and nine, All right? Because when you make an array of size 10, the indices range from zero to nine. What happens if we try setting index 70 to a number? Nope, should still work. It depends. In this case, we got zero. Um, we use compile shell script main.cc. <laughs> we got a memory leak. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and if we try running it, then ASAN kicks in and says, you went out of bounds. Okay. And so this brings me to something that I've wanted to talk about for a while, which is if I become, let's say, Olson, uh, and if you ever typed alias G++, this is going to show you the compile flags that are on by default for you guys. So instead of it just being G++, when you type G++, it actually is going to turn on a lot of flags. And these are also used when you compile something using the compile shell script. Uh, you saw the compile shell script there detected the the out of bounds on it uh, statically at compile time, which is nice. Uh, so what we got here is a bunch of compile flags. And this is something that I like to joke about with my students. Uh, it's like the Zelda meme, you know, take this with you on your way, it'll help you. Uh, one of my students has joked about getting a tattoo of dash F sanitize equals address because he would, he would never forget it then. Um, all of these things here are designed to set up a safe development environment for students. Uh, this is not what you want to release your game using because there's a lot of safety things here that slow stuff down. But slow and safe is good as a default. Only after you're confident that all of your code is correct should you turn off the safety rails and go for maximum speed. When you're doing development, you should always go slow and safe is my, is my philosophy. And so we've got things here like wall and, and extra. These turn on uh, a lot of warnings. You might think that all warnings is all warnings, but it's not. Uh, all warnings is just some some warnings. Uh, <laughs> extra warnings gives you more warnings than than all. And then if you use clang, there's clang uh, dash w everything. Everything gives you more warnings than. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Uh, clang gives you more warnings than um, than all and extra. So uh, pedantic warnings, and then those warnings turn into errors. And then I turn off these things being disable warnings. So I'm turning off the unused variable warning, and I'm turning off the unused parameter warning, because I don't care. Uh, if I'm doing development, and I make some variables, and I haven't used them yet, it's like, I know, chill, don't warn me about them. I know, I'm going to get to them. Um, and so these, these warnings annoy me, so I turn them off by default. 
Uh, before I release, I would put them back on just to make sure I don't have any unused parameters or unused variables left alone, you know, somewhere like a zombie in my code. Uh, but for doing development, uh, I hate I hate it when it's like, you haven't used parameter five yet. I'm like, I know, I'm getting to it. Just chill, wait, please. Stop warning me. <laughs> uh, this means C++ 20. You can compile your code with dash std equals C++ 23 nowadays. That's a thing. 27 is not a thing. Uh, 20 uh, works as well. QA is the uh, development name for C++ 20. Um, it should be effectively equivalent to 20 as well. The reason why they do that is because they don't know in advance, is it going to actually release in 2020? Because, you know, there could be things like pandemics that happen. Uh, but they got in under the deadline. So C++ 2A uh, did, in fact, turn into C++ 20. Uh, so that's like the development name for it. Uh, and I've just never bothered changing it because it's still C++ 20. You can change it to 23 if you want or whatever the latest... Um, you know, standard is um, that your compiler supports. Dash G is crucial here, uh, which is the uh, debug flag. It turns on debugging, uh, so you can do things like, um, uh, there's no a dot out. Uh, okay. And so, let's see, streams. Uh, streams. And so when you when you look at the executable that's made, there's all this kind of stuff in it. And um, this is really useful when you're doing development. You want to you want your debugger to know the names of functions. Otherwise, the function names will be question marks, you know, and things like that. And you can see the lines of code in it and stuff like that. So debugging information is really important when you're doing development. But uh, when you're releasing your code, a lot of times people will turn off the debugging flag. Because have you guys ever heard of people um, like going through the executables of a game like Minecraft, like they like hex dump it and they like open up the binaries and explore them and try to see what kind of new new stuff's coming out. Uh, Path of Exile, people do that. They like um, open up the binary and like dig around in it for like upcoming content. Have you guys ever seen that in, in video games and stuff like that? For like ongoing video games? Um, those people, yeah, those people. Um, and so... <laughs> Uh, and so if you want to make their life harder, you can turn off, you're familiar with the idea. Yeah. If you want to make their life harder, you can turn off debugging information and then that'll make it a little harder for them to like, kind of like browse around through your, your executable. But, uh, you, you should never need to disable that for this class. Uh, here we've got, uh, errors equals one and fatal errors. What that's going to do, it's going to limit your, your mistakes to just one. So if you screw something up like that. Uh, instead of that being an error and that being an error, because D1 doesn't exist, right? Because we forgot to, like, D1 didn't get made. And so that would cause another error down here for that D1. And you end up getting, like, every D1, like, is an error. And so it, it's not helpful, right? The only the only really helpful error is the first one, usually. And that's why I set max errors to one. And fatal errors mean stop compiling. Once we have an error, that's it. Stop. Print the error you know, and fix that and move on with your life. So that's a that's a nice quality of life thing that I recommend for people. This one here is pretty huge. That switches out the standard library, which is our topic for today, and that's why I'm kind of mentioning this. Uh, this swaps out the standard library for the safe standard library. Uh, before I knew that the safe standard library existed, I wanted to write it because that's how much it bothered me that things in the standard library would just crash or go out of bounds and things like that without any error checks. And so I was like, I've got to write a safe standard library. And then people are like, well, why don't you just use dash D you live C++ debug. I was like, ah, well, that's nice. I don't have to re-implement the entire standard library myself. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for telling me about that. You just saved me five years of work. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, no sarcasm. Thank you. I'm like, I'm not being sarcastic at all. Thank you for telling me that existed because otherwise I was going to do a lot of work. Um, and so this will do things like check to make sure that you're um, not going out of bounds and things like that. So for example, if you are, uh, if you got a vector or something, you got a vector of integers named vec, and let's give it some values. Um, we'll 
with some values. If we say vector dot at 10, what is this going to do? What is this going to print to the screen? There's only, what, six elements? So the, the elements range from zero to five. What happens if I try printing out element 10 using dot at? Just an easy five years. Five years is crazy. It, it, honestly, the, the standard library is gargantuan, right? And I don't know how much mental fortitude I'd have for that project, but I'd definitely at least do the vector class and things like that. Uh, why would somebody use the non-safe standard library? Because it's faster to not check for errors, right? And and so one of the biggest issues I have with C++, it's not really an issue exactly, is that it defaults, the defaults for the compiler is fast and unsafe. And I think the default should be the opposite. Because when I'm doing development, I want all of this turned on. And it's only when I'm like ready to like do a release that I want like, okay, let's turn off the safety checks, right? Like switch it out with a fast version again. Because I've, I've you know, proven to myself, I don't need this anymore. We don't need all those extra if statements checking for bounds, switch it out, get our frame rate up. Okay. The issue I have with C++ is that by default, things are fast and unsafe. And that's one of the reasons why C++ as a language has a bad reputation because people say C++ is fast and unsafe. And I'm like, no, that's just the default. If you provide this to the students, and you guys, a lot of you weren't even aware that these things are set for you uh, under the hood, you know, we're using the compile script, these are all set for you. It gives you a, a safe development environment so that if you go out of bounds, right? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Compile it. If we go out of bounds, then it will throw a throw an exception. But that's what it, it, it'll always go out of bounds. But watch what happens if I use square bracket. So square bracket doesn't have safety checks on it, right? That's why we that's why square bracket exists. That is the fast and and unsafe version of dot app. But wait, but wait, look at this, look at this. We actually did error check, okay? And the reason why we got error checking, even with square brackets, is because we're using the safe standard library. The safe standard library adds checks even to square brackets, okay? So even if you don't use dot at and you use square brackets, the safe standard library will bounce check for you. And so, um, neat, right? And it tells you, you know, you tried accessing element 10, but the container only holds six, you know, like you, you screwed up, right? And so if, however, we turn off the safe standard library, then it just goes out of bounds and it just accesses memory over there somewhere. And that's really bad. What we have on the screen right here is really bad because we went out of bounds and it didn't detect it. It just printed whatever was in RAM there and it's zero. You know, what we want is this. Anytime we go out of bounds in a vector or an array, we want it to tell us, right? And that's why I turn the safety features all the way up, all the way to the maximum, okay? So Bethesda never has a safe library. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, curious to see how the error would look without the safe standard library. Um, so this is without the safe standard library. You don't get any error message at all, right? Uh, it'll just, you know, access RAM, you know? Now, if we turn on the um, address sanitizer, so remember we were almost at the end here. These two things here are called sanitizers and sanitizers get inserted into the application and they kind of watch your program as it runs. Ubi san, undefined behavior sanitizer. This one's not super useful. It doesn't actually catch very many things that I found. It just works. <laughs> Todd Howard, okay. So uh, UbiSand doesn't really do very much, but you know, if you like integer overflow or something like that, it'll tell you it's like, error, you know, you, you an integer overflowed. Uh, but this is the big boy right here. Address sanitizer, which is called ASAN. ASAN is, is life, okay? Whoever made ASAN, I think it was Google, deserves all of the praise in the world for doing it because it essentially gives C++ the safety of Java. Um, very, very close, at least, like 99% the safety of Java. Uh, you can fool address sanitizer if you try, but never once in any of my like professional code has it ever given me a false positive or a false negative. Um, you, can, you can do things like if you have a pointer to two integers and you can like play pointer math and it, it can't tell because it's still allocated RAM, but um. Generally speaking, address sanitizer makes C++ as safe 
as Java. And watch what happens if we compile this code. No, no safe standard library, but we are going to turn on f sanitize equals address main.cc. So if we go out of bounds, no safe standard library on, but we have address sanitizer on. If we run it, then we get an address sanitizer um, crash, which is good. Again, if you go out of bounds, we want to know. We want to crash. We want your code to die and tell us which line of code it crashed on. The absolute worst thing possible is this, where your code runs, which sounds weird. You're like, well, I, don't, I want my code to run. I want my code to pass all the test cases. Yeah, you don't want it to run like this. Trust me, because someday it's not going to be zero. And when that day comes, your heart, heart fibrillator isn't going to turn on. It's going to crash when it's trying to you know, jolt somebody's heart awake, and then somebody dies in real life because your code didn't die today. So what we got here with our address sanitizer, and again, this is the safe standard library. The safe standard library has been turned off. We're using the unsafe standard library, but ad address sanitizer still caught our out of bounds. Okay, so we got a heap buffer overflow because we're on the heap, not the stack. And we can see which line of code it is on, which is, oh, we didn't turn on debugging. <laughs> so if we run this again, fa, 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 fa. Uh, this is what it looks like if you don't have debugging turned on. You know, you just get all of this and that's not helpful, right? This is not like, this is not a helpful um, diagnostic. If however, we compile this again and we turn on dash G, and run it, you will see that we get a little bit more information here. Ah, we crashed on line seven. Thank you. Isn't that a little bit more useful than what we had before? On, on line seven of main.cc, that file right there crashed on line seven. What happened? You went out of bounds. Okay. And so, uh, and then it's got all these like diagnostics. Uh, you know, it was allocated on line six, so you can see where the memory came from. It came from line six here. Uh, let's see if anything else here is particularly useful. Here's the shadow bytes. Doesn't really matter. That doesn't really matter. Okay. So yeah, the main thing is the line of code, right? Which is here. That's where the uh, array was made, and then here is where you went out of bounds. Okay. So if you then main.cc line seven. That takes us right to the line where we went out of bounds. Okay. So um, the, the upshot of all this is that I've given you guys a development environment that is safe, that is uh, basically as safe as Java. So that in the semester, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with memory, with pointers and things like that. Always compile your code with those flags turned on. If you compile your code using G++, it's going to be turned on by default. If you use compile, uh, it, it will even give you more diagnostics. Like that's at compile time, it tells you you went out of bounds at compile time. It didn't even need to run it. Uh, that's using something called CTP check, which I believe is also by Google. And then uh, when you run the code, the safe standard library gets inserted in by, by automatic. Why am I telling you this? Because if you compile your code using a make file, and we're going to be talking about make files later on, um, make files do not use your aliases. And so you're going to have to copy those flags into your make file to, to get them in. So if you ever want to know what my what my standard flags, compile flags are for you guys, it can be found here under alias G++. Okay. So you can just copy all of these into your make file once you learn how to make them. Because by default you get nothing. You will just get G++. Full speed, no safety, no debugging information. It won't default even to C 20, I think. I think the default for the version we have is 17 on the current version of G++ on the server. And so that's why I wanted to show you guys all these compile flags today. So I'm going to stop this recording here, which is just going to be about compile, compile flags for safety. And then we're going to move on to the standard library.